impetus for our conversation today was that Alaska Airlines incident. So how can lessons learned from incidents like that blowout be applied to improve quality control in, in factories? So, A, I, I, my heart goes out to the folks that are on that plane. That had to be an extraordinarily traumatizing and scary event. So you never want to hear about those things, particularly coming from manufacturing. So thoughts go out to them. Um Speaking specifically to the Boeing side of it, I got to leave that to the NTSB and Boeing to continue doing their their full deep dive as the root cause. A lot of the challenge that comes, whether it's an airplane that's had bolts that weren't tightened down or whether it's a car that the axle wasn't tightened down or whether it was a electronic system that wasn't sealed correctly, it, it's about trying to get the data succinctly and as quickly as possible. And so when you have a lot of paper travelers around that, it becomes very difficult to find the thread through to a true root cause to then stop that from ever occurring again. And also you want to be able to proactively identify it when it is happening so you can stop it from ever escaping. Does that make, make sense where I'm, I'm kind of going? And then you have kind of layers of risk that are built. Can you catch it in the factory? Can you catch it in your customer's factory? And then the worst case is when it gets out into the the consumer environment where it's then captured and it could be a warranty or it could be even just customer frustration that comes back from it. And so digitizing that process gives you a much stronger thread to be reactive to that in the first instance, and then gives you a lot more capability to integrate tools to be proactive. So you never actually even see that occur across the, what what could be the supply chain or out into the, the customer base on that end. So what would you say are some of the best practices for integrating um, the safety and reliability considerations into the overall manufacturing process for these smaller factories? A couple of things. One, don't be afraid to try it, particularly when you start getting into more accessible systems that can be pulled back in. A lot of the monolithic legacy systems, once you put it in, you are pretty locked into it and then you kind of forced you into... I won't call it bad practices, but not necessarily the practices you were aiming for, where a lot of the newer tools, they're much more modular, so you can flex in and out of that space. So taking the a little bit of a brave brave build to, to kind of jump after it and try it and, and move in that direction because it's a lot more accessible. I, I personally come from the School of Continuous Improvement, so I like the kind of crawl, walk, run approach. So put it in at a cell expand it to a couple nearby cells and then see how it's working for you so you can identify some of those known good solutions that work for the way your manufacturing uh, entails. The final bit of that is to actually go and use that data that is now being provided to be more proactive. So how do I stop things from ever occurring? How do I look for the next opportunities to kind of get to the more challenging problems to solve once you've kind of layered in those digital error proofing tools? Perfect. Um, okay, so I just have to touch on this topic because it is just such a, it's a very pervasive thing with the artificial intelligence and the machine learning. And I'm wondering in what ways can AI and ML technologies uh, enhance the quality control process in manufacturing? Um, is Pico MES utilizing <laughs> that? And what potential benefits do they offer for smaller factories, small to mid size in particular? I love the, the the thesis of this question and where it goes because, again, using AI to automate or to augment the human experience as to displace the human experience resonates for me. And that's very much where Pico is, is how do you augment the human experience and the human capability? I think many manufacturers, particularly as you get smaller and those that are earlier in, in the uh, digitization journey, AI is a far farther out milestone. One of the things Pico will really enable is you got to have data for um, AI. And so dropping a system like ours in to start collecting that data early and to start understanding the nuances of your manufacturing will then lead you down the path after many other steps to the ability to access the tools like AI and, and machine learning that come along with it. But starting first with that, again, crawl, walk, run approach of get the system in place, use some general lightweight statistics just to understand where you're seeing variance will provide a lot more benefit and a lot quicker ROI than trying to figure out how to get uh, 
a general um, AI system in to understand your system when you don't actually have data for it to operate off of. So when they decide that they want to utilize this tool, do they go to your website and fill in parameters? Do you go out to them and help them complete the parameters that they would need in order to benefit the best from uh, the system? Really depends on what where the the, the customer's at in that journey. Um, all, we do support a lot of our customers, kind of walk them through. If they're really new to the digital experience, we have team members that work in through that. Um, if you look at our customer feedback, one of our best points is our customer service. So we we open up direct lines of communication to answer that. Um, a lot of the questions we answer actually aren't directly related to our software. We're a bunch of manufacturing junkies. So we tend to take questions that kind of went outside the, how do I deploy software to how, what's the best way to do X, Y, or Z? And we lean into like to answer that. Um, so helping those customers through that journey, whichever path they're on, whether they're on a drop in and run or whether they're on a crawl, 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 walk kind of methodology, we can work that through. What we generally do is take them through some variation of a, of, of a pilot or something to show the proof of value or proof of concept for them. It usually lasts two to four weeks. And then once they're happy and they've seen the system, they are away and running and it doesn't take but a few minutes to keep creating more and more work instructions so they can kind of spider out and, and network out to the rest of their facility as they're ready. So how long would you say it takes to, to see um, a difference or an improvement or what's the ROI when somebody invests in this? And, um, you know, if you could speak to that. We would say within hours, because once you get us in, it only takes Pico in a worst case, half a day to a day to set up. Um, in many places and once you're in and running and you can actually start seeing what's going on on the shop floor it's very eye-opening too you can see variants across users so you can help some of the users that might not have had enough training or had enough understanding of what the optimum result was um, all the way through to if you're having a lot of warranty issues and you put it a system like ours in where you're error proofing it, you're you almost have a virtually instant ROI because that problem never escapes. So you never have that warranty issue coming back. So it's how long that warranty issue took the cycle back through. But in, in theory the, the ROI would be instant. And then you kind of kind of build on that. But most of our customers within the first month or two have got the full full payback from using the system, both expressly and through longer term capability build out. Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else you wanted to add uh, before we close out our conversation? I appreciate you taking some time today and uh, going through it. I'm very passionate about helping manufacturers uh, in the U.S. particularly expand and grow. So as people are starting to think about reshoring or changing their manufacturing processes as the industries change, we, we just we love to be on this journey. So I, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to talk about it. Well, great. And thank you so much for joining us today, Brian. Until next time, stay curious.